Welcome back everyone, I am Zadie and this is Kerbal Space Program and today people, today we are going to be doing something a little different. <clears throat> we are going to be switching things up. Like I said in the last episode, we want to wrap up the moon and we want to move on with life and go places. So we're going to take a look at our windows uh, going to uh, Duna and Moho and pretty much everywhere and we're, ending, we're going to send a probe to one of these. Now, uh, spoiler alert, you're still going to watch it, but um, i can go ahead and tell you, according to our window planner, everything that we want to send ideally to these planets is about two to three years away. I'm not waiting that long um, to, to do that, so what that means is we're just going to need a little extra Delta V in order to get there. Um, as you can see, it's uh, reading there. It's like, you know, year three, day 122, year two, day 258. So that one's actually kind of close. It's about a little over a year away um, to go to um, ELO. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're going to go to Duna. That's what we're going to do today. And, uh, yeah, let's get started with the build. Now, this is not going to be anything too fancy. It doesn't take a lot to get a little satellite there. As a matter of fact, our SAT-5, that our SAT-5 design, that's Gigamont, that is not SAT-5. Um, oh, I know what. I was like, oh, I got to reuse Gigamont, Gigamont. But um, unfortunately, those are all manned. So those are going to be, um, that's going to be changed and retrofit to uh, send people to and send to people to and from the Skylab and it's also going to be sent as uh, a supply runner for the the Skylab as well so um geek up that's what's going on with your your spacecraft you won't see it in this episode it'll actually be in the next episode where we start retrofitting the um the, the Skylab uh to to start receiving um stuff from uh from your your rocket so you you sir your stuff is not done yet it still has life. Anyways, we're just gonna add a little bit of extra staging to this. As as a um, as a build, this is actually uh, not that bad. Um, the the satellite design was was pretty pretty decent. Um, I do do a little tweaking here and there with the uh, with the satellite, um, moving some stuff around and reorganizing and. Uh, but as a whole, man, that satellite build was uh, was pretty decent. We we, I mean, all in all, it's all aesthetic minor tweaks that I'm moving stuff around, like taking Mac Jab off. I mean, you know, um, moving moving the uh, the solar panels up, adding different types of solar panels, moving them around, moving the science around. All in all, it's uh, like I said, it was um, the redesign. We added a little extra fuel. The redesign itself was uh, very, very minor. Sorry, I had to pause and, and take a drink. I was uh, starting to uh, lose my voice. Been talking a lot today. Anyways, um, so we're, we're going to put science on this as much as possible. Uh, we want to uh, be able to grab science from high above Duna and um, the low Duna orbit. I think that's how you would uh, how you say that. Um, I was thinking about, <clears throat> excuse me, also I was thinking about adding more thrust to it, but this thing is, is perfectly fine on its own. It does, it doesn't need any extra stuff. It's going to be able, we, we do have a SETI mission, uh, to go from Duna to Ike, which is, uh, not a problem. Ike is, uh, Duna's moon. I think, I think that's the name of it is Ike. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, this thing is going to have more than enough thrust to, uh, to visit, uh, Duna and Ike and, uh, park itself above Duna, uh, which we have a mission for that too. So we've got a mission to uh, explore Duna and Ike. We've also got a mission to uh, be in a specific orbit around Duna. So we're, we're going to complete both of these with this this uh, this satellite. However, I will tell you this right now, since because we have life Kerbal life support on, and uh, it's going to take this thing... Um, I can't remember the exact mission time, but it's not going to reach Duna for like a year. So this thing is going to get, um, get launched today. We're going to put it, uh, in a trajectory towards Duna today. And then that'll be that for this thing for quite some time. 
uh, before we see it again uh, to um, to actually complete the mission. That, but but that being said, it does it does take a long time to get to uh, to other bodies out in space. And in between missions, once again, once again, once we wrap up the moon, I I probably will fast forward a little bit because the people who are in the sky lab, I'm not too worried about. I, they've got a lot of food, and I can resupply them very very easily. So if I need to um, send a resupply mission to them while this thing is headed headed to. Um, Duna, that's not a problem. I can always just uh, put a, a Kerbal time. I actually use a Kerbal timer for this. Kerbal alarm clock uh, to show me when this thing is there. But um, again, if I need to do something for uh, for the uh, the food and, and the oxygen supplies on this, the uh, space station, not a problem. That's easily done and uh, can be done again using G Gigamut's um, his, uh, his design to, uh, to send supplies to and from the uh, the space station. I just noticed while editing this that I put those struts on the engines. Though it's not going to cause a problem, it's not ideal that you do that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Also, we're going to add some fins to this thing. It is a little tall. So I want to make sure it's got good stability in the uh, in the atmosphere. And plus, with these solid rocket boosters, this thing's going to have a lot of thrust at the very beginning. So it's going to be a little hard to control its angle and get it into a gravity turn, which um, can be challenging with solid rocket boosters because of uh, the amount of thrust they produce. Uh, they're really designed for heavier vehicles, and uh, this one's not that heavy. Uh, but we added the solid rocket boosters because we need as much um, help getting into the uh, into er orbit, almost in orbit. Uh, we need as much help getting into orbit as possible. That way we can save the fuel that we're going to need for the maneuvering, um, ac actually burning to Duna and actual uh, burns around Duna to uh, prolong the life of this uh, satellite. The more fuel we get to Duna, the better. Because we may end up getting other missions where it's, you know, reposition the satellite, or we may need to reposition the satellite um, uh, for some other reason, or what have you. So, again, having fuel, a lot of extra fuel on this thing is not a bad thing. And you can see, right now, it's a fairly cheap rocket. Uh, only 55000 almost uh, 56000 uh, Kerbal dollars to, uh, to send this thing into space. That is not a lot. Um, it is fairly cheap and as it being a new rocket the standard does apply I want to show you guys what it looks like and you can tell this thing gets Gets going quick. Oh so quick. We're already um, Already reaching 20,000 uh, 20 kilometers above Kerbin. So yeah Decent little rocket cheap little rocket um, as a matter of fact, I'm probably going to reevaluate uh, going, uh, sending a, a probe to uh, Jewel, sending a probe to uh, Mo Moho and um, uh, Eve, because uh, they're um, when they get into alignment. I don't think they're in alignment right now. I'd have to double check, but um, yeah, it, it's it's satellites going to those things are going to become more common. Uh, because I want to get that sweet, sweet science from them. Fill out our tech tree. And as soon as our tech tree is filled out, you know, we can do some really crazy stuff. Uh, the, I know I know I've been wondering where this series is going to go uh, eventually when um, we're done with the tech tree. And I want to let you guys know that I'm probably going to continue it for a little while after that. So that we can... We're, we're going to... We're going to land on every planet that is that is able to be landed on obviously you're not going to land on jewel because it's a gas giant but um that is the goal of the uh of this series that's going to be its end game so um what don't you've got so many more episodes <laughs> before this thing is actually over um keen-eyed people will notice that i botched that uh that orbital insertion um botched it pretty good we actually came back down into the atmosphere before we scraped out it back and went back into space and this is to me just toying around getting the um getting the correct uh uh the encounter with duna setting up our maneuver node we're gonna go straight from Kerbin to duna now one thing i will say uh as a tip for people who are doing this when you launch 
into orbit around carbon. You want to stay low around carbon because the lower, the closer you are to carbon, the faster you're going, and uh, that speed will help you um, reach out to. Uh, excuse me, I just burped. Didn't cut it out because I wasn't fast enough. I actually froze. Anyways, uh, it, it'll it'll assist you with um, getting uh, getting your ship to uh, its speed to eject from carbon. Kerbin's sphere of influence getting to your where you want to go. So uh yeah, just a just a little side note. Also, make sure you um 295 days. That's how long it's gonna take me to get to Appalapse. It's 295 days. Um you see there, I'm, I'm a little freaking out a little bit because I, I can't set an alarm clock. But that's because I haven't left Kerbin's sphere of influence yet. Once I once I leave Kerbin's Kerbin's sphere of influence. I can um, put a uh, alarm clock down for uh, for what you call it for uh, Appalapse, but yeah, just um, this is me just trying to set it up right now, and it says there's uh, no Appalapse uh, point found on our current plan, which is like I said, just ignore. You can ignore that. I I'm a I'm a I'm a dit sometimes, and uh, didn't realize that it wouldn't wouldn't come until uh i got out of Kerbin's sphere of influence but you can see with the trajectory that's a good shot of it uh where of how things are going to go so we're going to shoot out we're going to come in and we're actually going to go outside of duna's orbit a little bit and then come back in and that's where we're going to hit it uh and that's going to take a long time to do that uh a hell of a long time to do that uh what that say 305 days to Appalapse. So, in the meantime, let's get some science from the moon. Yeah, that's right. Driving our rover around, I do have a waypoint set up to where I wanted to go. This is the, uh, like I said, there was only two or three biomes. Actually, I think it was only two that were close to where I landed um, that I hadn't already picked up. So, uh, yeah, this, this is just uh, me driving along, going that direction. And... Uh, yeah, kind of boring. Not gonna lie. Not the most exciting stuff. So we uh, went out and got our science, and then we came back. Um, I mean, if you guys wanted to put on Holiday Road and, God damn, that's an old reference. If you want to put on Holiday Road and watch me drive, I I'll be more than happy to uh, recut this and send it out there. But, dude, it's it's me driving for well. It took me an hour to get there. It took me an hour to get back, so keep that in mind. It wasn't uh, what I would call very exciting stuff here. Uh, so this is our lander saying bye bye to our landing spot on the moon. Another problem I did is I actually I didn't cater to I, I, I did I botched this whole fucking thing. Um, I should have. Uh, I, I should have landed in the orbit of... Um, I should have gotten to an equatorial orbit around the moon. So that way, getting back into... Um, meeting back up with the space the spaceship wouldn't have been an issue. Uh, as you can see here, I had to do a lot of maneuver nodes here and there in order to, uh, to get us back to uh, have an encounter with the, uh, with the, the spaceship itself. I, I learned a lot from this mission. And uh, one of the, I learned several things. First of all, before you leave the surface of the um, of the moon with your lander, if you're using TAC life support, make sure you transfer food into your capsule because the Kerbins use the food in your capsule first. That was the first lesson I learned when I pulled everything up and I was looking at it and everything was gone. I, I could have launched this thing. These guys would have died. Uh, the second thing I learned is that um, make sure you put a battery on the portion that you're going to send into space. That's right. It ran out of power. So I couldn't do any more maneuver nodes with it. So what I had to do was come back into the tracking station, turn everything on where I could see the damn thing, and then I had to use the capsule itself to set up a maneuver... To where I could, I would basically I'm matching the uh, the lander's um, velocity right now, which is going to put me on the same orbit as it, 
and then I'm going to go to it. So basically, the, these guys were without power, and that's bad. So I'm basically trying to play catch up to the lander by burning a lot of fuel. Thank God I put a lot of fuel on this thing. It just, it just, it was, I botched it. And uh, this is me playing catch up to it. I'm basically trying to get to the lander as quickly as possible so that the, the two Kerbals in there don't die and I don't lose more crewmen. Um, people, what can I say? I make errors too. I'm, I, I mean, obviously I make errors. You guys have seen me make plenty of errors. Hell, I've killed Kerbals just by forgetting that they're in the damn vehicle I'm testing. Um, but anyways, we're just going to dock up with this lander and uh, hope and pray that the, when we open the hatch, there's not two Kerbin sickles in there from uh, no power. With uh, And with no power, there's no heat, there's no oxygen, there's no nothing, so... Hopefully they're smart enough to turn their um, their uh, spacesuits on, <laughs> put their helmets on, and, and breathe while I while I dock with them. But yeah, that's that's what's going on right now. It, it, it was a stupid oversight. I like I said, you live and you learn, and um, learn I did. I learned several things with this mission. I learned that rovers suck. I learned that the moon sucks, and I learned that uh, you know you need to put batteries on on things. And uh, make sure you transfer the right stuff uh, before you leave. But uh, luckily, I lucked out on that one. That was pure, like at the beginning of this clip, that's where you saw me transferring the uh, the food and stuff over. That was pure dumb luck. Had I not had I not noticed that, uh, there's no telling. Uh, but I um, didn't get so lucky with the battery. I just realized I sounded like a, a kind of a snob. Um, well, if you want to uh, put the battery on there, you want to find these problems. Anyways, this is us docking, and lo and behold, they're not Kerbin Sickles. This is amazing news. Absolutely amazing. So, we are going to get all that science that we just gathered and spent all that time down the surface of the moon. We're going to get all that back. We're going to grab it right now with our uh, Kerbal, and then we're going to put it on our our spaceship. Go ahead and uh, change over and board. And then uh, once we do that, oh god, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. It, it, I press the wrong button sometimes. It happens. Uh, once we get them on board, we're going to go ahead and start preparing to go back to Kerbin uh, by transferring all of the uh, fuel that's left over. And by um, plotting our course, uh, which apparently I cut out, but uh, yeah, we transferred we transferred the fuel over. We tra we made sure there's no kerbals in there, and we got all the science out and everything. Um, oh, I know why I cut it. I cut it for time because this thing is over 20 minutes long. This is a 21 minute video. This is actually one of the longest videos I've had in long, uh, a while. The most of them have been around 15 minutes. So you guys are getting extra kerbal today. Uh, no wonder I'm um, exhausted from talking. But, uh, yeah, this is just standard operating procedure here. Just coming back into Kerbal. Um, burning the wrong direction, apparently. Because I still was in the uh, the moon's sphere of influence. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to come back down nice and easy over Kerbin. Did it again for some reason. My Kerbal space program was acting wonky this game. I will admit that uh, I haven't updated Kerbal space program since we started this. So, uh... I know that things tend tend to go wrong um, when you do that. So that is another thing that could kill this series in a heartbeat is if uh, the file gets corrupted. So just keep that in mind too. If one day Kerbal Space Program is not there anymore, it's probably because the file the file is so old. This this series has been going on for quite some time. Um, this is uh, episode twenty two um, or twenty one. This is, no, this is episode 22. So this series has actually been going on for 22 weeks. Um, 22 weeks, almost 22 weeks straight. So uh, that's how old uh, the copy of Kerbal Space Program I'm using is. Um, that scared me a little bit when I separated like that and it didn't come off. But um, it worked out okay. Uh, balanced itself out. Coming back in through the atmosphere, obviously not a problem. We slowed ourselves down fairly a lot coming back in, using that extra fuel that we had in there. Again, thank God I put extra fuel into that damn thing. This moon mission has been filled with 
good things and bad things. And bad things have happened with um, getting to the moon and returning to the moon. And, and just, it has been a, a, a learning experience that I'll probably never forget. Um, but it indeed has been a learning experience. Uh, Jesus, this thing, this, 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 hopefully our next band mission to Minmus is not going to be as bad. We are going to send probably the same way there with some, uh, science stuff on it. But anyways, guys, that is the countdown. That's the time, um, the, the ending coming. 1,234 science. Worth it! Worth it! We're going to get more from Minmus because we're going to be going around to all the biomes there. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, I do appreciate the comments down in the comment section below. If you'd like the video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. We'll see you next time, guys, for more Redneck Space Program. Hope you enjoyed it.